Today I'll be teaching on optimal lag selection in AViews. How do you decide the most optimal lag for your model and for your variables? But before I go into the practical example, I need to let you know on some basic things regarding selecting optimal lags. In economics, the dependence of a variable y on another variable x is rarely instantaneous. That is, most often, the dependent variable responds to the explanatory variable within a lapse of time. That lapse of time is what we call a lag. That is, y does not respond to x immediately. So there is a lag between that response time. But how many lags do you have to put in a model? We need to exercise caution when using lags in our model. This is because too many lags often lead to you losing degrees of freedom. It can also cause multicollinearity among the regressors. It can also lead to serial correlation in your error terms and also miss specification errors. Again, the question researchers often ask or students often ask is, how many lags do I have to use for my model? The truth is that there is no hard and fast rule on your choice of lag. It's basically an empirical issue. If you have an annual data, the number of lags is typically small, one or two lags. If you are using a quarterly data, between one to eight lags is appropriate. And if you have monthly data, you can use six, 12, or 24 lags if you have sufficient data points. However, the easiest way to decide out of this quagmire is choosing that criterion that gives you the lowest value. Most econometric packages can easily compute this optimal lag length. So the rule of the thumb is that you use that model that gives you the lowest value among these criteria. I will run through a practical example with you, then you will understand better. But also know that some trial and error is inevitable. It boils down to the fact that choosing optimal lag for your model is simply an empirical issue. But we are able to resolve that by using some information criterion, which I'm going to put you through. So make sure you have your system on, loading your data, and let's get started. I'm going to launch my eViews. It's already here. I will click on my data. If you still don't know how to load in your Excel file into eViews, make sure you have watched my previous video on how you can load your Excel file into eViews. Now I have um, three variables. In this example, from 1970 quarter 1 to 1991 quarter 4. So I have the quarterly data giving me 88 observations. The three variables are GDP, PCE, that's personal consumption expenditure, and PDI, that is personal disposable income. The C here stands for the constant or the intercept of the regression line, is a quarterly data, and the receipt here is a residual from the regression line. If I click Double click on each of these variables, you're able to see the series the way they are. But individually, these variables are not going to mean much to me. So what I need to do is what I call a group data. So I press down my control key and I click on each of these three variables. I right click, open as group. So I'm creating a group data with GDP, PC, and PDI. I come here, name, and I name it table 21. In eViews, you are not allowed to put space when you are identifying your object, so table 21 has no space in between. I click OK. I close this up. So here, you can see my group data here as table 21. So if I double click on it, I have my data in this work file. Now, how do we choose the optimal lag for this model? Number one, we have to run what we call an unrestricted var. And why are we running an unrestricted var is simply because we assume that these variables are not co-integrated. So to run an unrestricted model for these um, three variables, you go to quick. From quick, you maneuver down to estimate var. You click on it. Here I have the button already highlighted for standard var. In the column for endogenous variables, I type in all my variables. Remember on the var. All the variables are endogenous. There are no exogenous variables in the VAR model. So I'm typing in all the variables into the endogenous variables box. 
Under the lag intervals for endogenous, I have one, two. So the maximum lag here, I have two. But because I have a quarterly data, I may decide to put in four lags first. Remember, I can use up to one, between one to eight lags. Again, you can see my estimation sample is showing me that I have a quarterly data from 1971st quarter to 1991. The only exogenous variable indicator here is by default is a constant. So I am, I'm not changing anything anymore. I click OK. Now I have the regression output for this unrestricted VAR. If you look up here, you can see it's a VAR vector auto regression estimate. And the sample adjusted is from 1971 to 1991. Included observations, you have 84 after adjustments. Remember, I made room for four lags. So 88 minus 4, I'm left with 84. Um, I'm not bothered or concerned about this upper part of the regression output. I'm concerned about these ones. In the second um, regression output here, where you have these three columns, each of these outputs relates to each of the endogenous variable. So here, my main concern is the Akaike and the Schwarz criterion. But I'm still not concerned about this. I'm most particularly concerned about the bottom part of the regression table. The regression results here relates to the estimates of the VAR system itself. These estimates are relating to the VAR system. The upper part of this estimate, this one that has the three columns, relates to the estimates of the endogenous variable. So please don't confuse um, these uh, tables. So here, I can see that my Akake information criterion is 26.851 and the Schwarz is 27.98. The rule of the term is that you choose that criterion that gives you the minimized figure, the smallest figure the least figure. So in this case, I'm choosing the AIC to be the best fit for this model. The lower the value, the better the model. So AIC is the indicated criterion for this VAR model. However, we cannot be um, experimenting with different lags before we decide which one to use for this model. So in eViews, there's a very simple way by which you can get different options for the lag length, and there you can now choose which one best fits your model. What you have to do then is to go to View, click on View, then come over to Lag Structure. From Lag Structure, maneuver to Lag Length Criteria, click on it. Here you can see that lags to include has already highlighted eight. This is because I have a quarterly data and I can use up to eight lags. So I'm not going to change this. I'll simply click OK. Once I click OK, this is what eViews has returned for me. I have here the lag structures from lag zero to lag eight, and I have one, two, three, four, five, six, six information criterion to choose from. Again, you have to look for that criterion that is asterisk and is also the lowest figure. In this case, I observe that AIC is asterisk at lag 2 and it has the least figure in this range at 26.90693. So this tells me that lag 2 is the best um, optimal lag for me to choose for this my model. So for model GDP, PC, and PDI, I'll be using LAG2 to run my analysis as indicated by the AIC criterion. Now, having said that, we can do the same for each of the respective variables. How do we do that? If I need to know the optimal LAG to use for GDP, I double click on GDP and I run the unrestricted VAR for GDP. I go to quick, I click on estimate VAR, the standard VAR is already highlighted. I type GDP under endogenous variables. Because I have a quarterly data, I also decide, I would decide to put four there. I click OK. I have the result output here. I'm only concerned about the last part and I can also see here that Akake has a lower criterion compared to Schwarz. 
9.9 for KK, Shoaz has 10.124. Given that, I need to know the various options I have between lag 0 to lag 8 to choose from for the GDP variable. So what I do next is to go to view and I go straight on to lag structure, lag length criteria. I click on that. I leave the 8 lags to include as 8. I click OK. So here I can also see that from the option 0 to 8 that I have for GDP, AIC also has the lowest criteria at 9.93. So this tells me that the GDP model, lag 2, is the most optimal for it. Doing the same, you have to do the same for all the variables that you want to use. Next, I go to PCE. I double click. Make sure you are doing it as I'm doing it. I double click on PCE. I run unrestricted var by going to quick, estimate var. I type PCE in this place. I change my lag 2 to lag 4. I click OK. I have my regression output, so let's see what it says. Still lower than Shoaz. AIC is still lower than Shoaz. AIC is 8.65. Shoaz is 8.79. For me to know the different options available for me between lag 0 and lag 8, I go to lag structure, lag length criteria. I leave the 8 lags in the box. I click OK. Remember, I'm using a quarterly data. So if you're using a monthly data or yearly data, you may have to adjust your lags as applicable. Okay, let's take a look at this output. I can see here that AIC is indicating lag 4 for PCE. The asterisk is on lag 4 and is also the lowest among AIC, SC, and HQ. So I have 8.698. So for model P for variable PCE, I'll be using lag4 to run the analysis. Lastly, let me take a um, PDI and decide on the optimal lag to use for the model. It's going to be the same procedure. I have to run your unrestricted var first. I go to quick. I go to estimate var. The standard var is indicated. I type PDI. PDI is there. I change 2 to 4 just to maintain the same procedure. I click OK. Let's check which one is better between AIC and Shores. It's still AIC here for PDI at 9.6. Okay. I go to view, lag structure, lag leg criteria to know the options available for me between lag 0 to 8 to choose, choose from. Now looking at the result for PDI, lag 1 is most suitable to run the PDI analysis. At lag 1, the AIC is 9.60 and which is lower than the every other criteria listed. So this is how you can choose optimal lag either for your model and also for your variables. But before I close this uh, tutorial, let me just do a recap again of what you need to know when choosing optimal lag. Remember, there is no hard and fast rule on your choice of lag length, but care must be taken when using lags. If you use too many lags in your model, you are going to lose degrees of freedom. It may lead to multicollinearity among your regressors. It may lead to serial correlation and also misspecification errors. If you have an annual data, you may likely use maximum of two lags. If you are using a quarterly data like I am using, maximum you may use up to eight lags. And if you have a monthly data with sufficient data points, you can even go as much as 24 lags. The easiest way for you to know which lag length to use is to look for that criteria that gives you the lowest value. It's a rule of thumb in choosing. And most of these econometric packages can easily compute all these things. Thank you for watching from Crunch Econometrics. We'll see you next time.